Well, this service is a little bit different. Obvious. Nobody's getting married because we're already married. We're already betrothed to our bridegroom, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And so, in that betrothal, we have agreed to put our name upon the ketubah, the marriage contract. And that marriage contract, that promise that God has made to his bride, is the Torah, is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Now, as you know, we've certainly, we have navigated in the autumn here, all these high holy days, right? There are seven Moedim, seven Moedim, or holy days, that are to be perpetually observed. Seven. Wait a minute, what are we doing here? This is not one of them. <laughs> this is not one of them. Our celebration revolves around a completion and the immediate resumption of a one-year reading cycle of the first five books of the Bible, together with readings from the writings and the prophets of Ketavim and Nevi'im, and of course, the Ketavim HaShachim. Amen? The apostolic writings. Just like our Lord, He has no beginning, He has no end. Amen. We continue in our reading, in our growth. The tradition that we're partaking of this morning evolved out of a desire. Out of a desire to obey a command given Yehoshua or Joshua. Because when we come to the end of Devarim or Deuteronomy, which we will, what follows? What book follows? Joshua. Pay no attention to that lady in the back. <laughs> Yehoshua, because he was going to step into the land. And it's very interesting. The very first command, the very first thing he talks about is the necessity to be obedient to the Word of God. I was thinking to myself about obedience. You know, in this world we live in, there's many people have different ideas about God or, or if there is a God. Of course, some people take a very strong position and some take sort of a moderate position. And the interesting thing about it is that you might be in a conversation, a sort of a, you know, a spiritual conversation with somebody. They go, well, I, I'm not sure what I believe or how I believe. I was thinking to myself, well, really, God's not dependent upon whether you believe or don't believe. <laughs> because God exists. It's irrelevant, really, what you believe. That's right. It really is. God is not, you know, bearing his identity upon whether we choose to believe or not. He is. Yeah. He right. says what? I am. He doesn't have to defend his existence in any way whatsoever. He is. What you, what you choose to do in that process is entirely up to you. But He is. He is Lord and Lord, King of Kings. Amen? Amen? And He is that word right there. Where to go? Time to move. As we should be on the move. Amen? Amen? What He does desire from us is what? He's not concerned about whether we believe. He just wants our obedience. He appreciates the sacrifice. Thank you for all the sacrifice during the High Holy Days. What you gave of yourself, your time, your resources, bless you all. We said that in the, uh, in the bulletin. Bless everyone for all how they participated and contributed. And that's wonderful. You know, we all want to do the good mitzvah. But in that process, there's also something even more important to our Lord, and that's obedience. Faithful obedience to his word and way. Amen? Amen. You know, though it is a scroll... That's full of instructions and commands for all of God's people. What is, the, what is the spirit of what's taking place? You know, some follow that kicking and screaming all the way. <laughs> but no, this should be an attitude of joy and rejoicing. Amen? Yeah. If God tells you no, you should go hallelujah. <laughs> if God tells you to do something you don't like, you should go yeah. Yeah. Because you know in the back of your head that it's the right thing. Because God loves you so much. How much does he love you? Yes, he gave his only son. Yeah, that's, right. that's a lot of love, brothers and sisters. If you've got kids, maybe you can relate to that a little bit. But 
But first and foremost, from the redemptive reality revealed in us of God sent Yeshua, is that what that word is all about? Who the Father sent to show us the way. It's the way of life. God gives us free will. We can, again, do what we want to do. We go ahead. But there is a perfect way. So if you want to flounder through life, trying to figure it out along the way, you know what I'm saying? I got I got a new dishwasher. You know, I got a new dishwasher. Thank you, David, for putting that in. Can you help me put the dishwasher in? I think about my dishwasher is. I've got a pretty good one. Okay, praise the Lord. Because I wanted a quiet one. Right? Right. And if you were in our house, you'd see Michelle and I going, Is it working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's working. Now, see, I haven't had a chance to do anything with this dishwasher yet. So, you know what I'm going to have to do? I have to break out the instruction manual. I'm going to have to figure it out. Right? That's what this is all about. Life. I'm trying to figure out life. Aren't we? We're trying to figure out what God wants from us. How do we relate to God and each other? The way we should go, the way we shouldn't go. That's what that's all about. That's to help us figure it out. How to live this life and prepare us for the life to come. Now, unlike our Christian brothers and sisters, I'm not so much of beating up on them, I'm just making a comparison. We try to convince us. They try to convince us differently. Well, we nailed all that to the cross. Right? You know that's the cross. Well, of course, we know it's not true. But that is what they tell us. They tell us differently. It was Yeshua who made it clear at his first public speaking engagement. And Stephanie Carpenter is going to read that for us this morning. That his coming was not to abolish that. It's very, very interesting that at the beginning of Joshua's ministry, going into the land, into the promise, the first thing that comes out of his mouth is the necessity to obey that. And the very first thing that Yeshua does going into his ministry is what? The very first thing he tells us is, I didn't come to do away with this. We have to obey this. Don't think that I've come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. To the contrary, I've come to bring it to its fullest expression. Amen. That through him the spirit of the Torah would be realized. And he warned the Torah teachers of his day. And that warning should resonate today. That same warning that whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvot and teaches, teaches others to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Does that matter to our pastors and leaders today? That they'll be called least in the kingdom? But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And I think there's a reason for that. Because it's so easy to go with the flow. What, what a great accomplishment is that? Right? There's no great accomplishment in that. But when you stand up for Yeshua and his word and his way, there is flack, there is, there is blowback from doing that. And it's going to come from your brothers and sisters in Yeshua. That's where it's going to come from. Remember, when you're lifting the Torah up, you're lifting up Yeshua. The two are symbiotic. They are inseparable. Yeshua provides us plenty of motivation to do so. For when we obey the mitzvah and teach others to do the same, he says, we will be called great in the kingdom. And he didn't say it'd be an easy process. Now the sages declare that there is no free person except one who is immersed in Torah. As it is written, the Torah is the way. For I read from Psalm... 119, 2 to 3, how happy are those, happy, who observe his instructions, who seek him wholeheartedly. They do nothing wrong, but live by his ways. And the Torah is the truth. Again, Psalm 119, 
Your righteousness is eternal righteousness, and your Torah is truth. And the Torah is life. For we read in the final final chapters of Devarim, take to heart all the words of my testimony against you today so that you can use them in charging your children to be careful to obey all the words of this Torah, for this is not a trivial matter for you. On the contrary, it is your life. It is your life. And the Torah, of course, is not only the way and the truth and the life, the Torah is Yeshua. For I am the way, I am the truth and the life. And the no one comes to the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. So brothers and sisters, Jeannie was excited. I don't hate to single her out, but she's excited about today. I love her spirit. But I'm glad her spirit is back in this congregation. She's excited. Because this is a year that I hope and pray as much as we immerse ourselves at the buffet table, that we immerse ourselves in the Word. It's funny to me, we had an awfully good turnout for Shemini, uh, Sukkot Torah and Shemini Yetzirah. I mean, it's just the, uh, Shemini Yetzirah. It's amazing what happens when you put food out there. Well, you know what? I want to tell you something. There's nothing more important to dine on than this right here. Because what you dined on on Sukkot or Shemini Yetzirah is gone. But what you dine on here goes with you forever. Amen. 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 This you should immerse yourself in. This you should <clears throat> desire more than anything else. Remember Ephesians 1 verse 7. In union with him through the shedding of his blood, we are set free. Our sins are forgiven. And brothers and sisters, that is the joy. That is the joy of Simchat Torah. Rejoice in his word. Don't look at that as a physical object. Look at that as the doorway to eternity. Look at that as Yeshua. You are holding the Son of God there. Because he said, I am the Word. Hold him, lift him up, rejoice in him. Amen? Amen. Please rise. Yamul, Lydia, Abad, Abraham, La Torah.